Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is the top 10 tips, tricks, recommendations, hacks, suggestions, awareness, whatever you want to call them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate those shares out there. Having a nice Polish lager. I'm not going to say it's the best, but they do make some much better ones than this one, but this one's pretty decent and I'm kind of enjoying it. So we've got 10 tips. This is week 34 and I've got one for the ones out there who have kids. If you have kids, I'm going to teach you how to avoid them drinking your beer when you go on vacation without buying all those expensive locks. Much easier, especially if you have a keys or if you don't, you may, you know, your mileage may vary. But number one, let's go right into it. If you have an all grain brewing system that has a grain basket. So if you have an anvil, grain father, pretty much any of the big popular ones out there right now. I was talking with a subscriber a while back and I have not been able to test this. I really need to do two anvils side by side to do the test for this. And I don't have that amount of equipment at this time. But in the middle of your mash at about halfway, take your grain basket, lift it all the way up, give it a second, and then set it all the way back down. There's a theory behind this. And what you'll notice when you lift the grain basket, your temperature should drop. What's happening here is there is dead space. And the anvil has quite a bit of dead space around the outer edge. Sorry, Blickman, but there is. It'll drop down and some of that is not being recirculated very well or at all from my understanding. And the person who explained this makes perfect sense to me. And that's one of the reasons I want to test it, but I just haven't had the time to do it. So the theory is that if you do that about halfway through your mash and then you set it back down, you're going to get some of that warp that wasn't really warp, but more like water hanging out to get circulated into there. And it should or may improve your efficiencies. Just something to try, doesn't cost you a dime, takes a minute, but something to consider, especially if you're not doing a recirculation, that would probably be huge. Number two, make your own tap handles. Yeah, make your own tap handles. I took one of mine off to show you and I have every other one because this is the middle, so I cut here. But all I did was I bought those wooden supporting posts that are for banisters, you know, banisters, like, you know, around the stairwell or out on your deck or wherever you may have. I stained them and then I bought chalk erase or chalk tape, whatever you want to call it, cut it to size, put it on here. And then I get these chalk markers and I write on them. You will need a 15 slash 64 of an inch. So 15 64 of an inch drill diameter wise to drill a hole. I'll put a picture and I'll put a link down below in the description for these little screw pieces that go in here and you use a flat head screwdriver and you twist them on in. If you have a drill press, I'd highly recommend it. It'd be a lot easier. You may have to have a drill press where you can drop this thing pretty low to get it in there. None of mine are perfectly centered or perfect in any way. I did my best. I did them a long time ago and I'm not really mechanical or into carpentry. So, but super cheap, super easy. I know wood's kind of crazy right now, so maybe they're not super cheap, but they will get that way again. But something to consider. And I mean, I have all mine on display right now. They look great. I like them. My only issue with them is getting in and out. I made them kind of high and occasionally I hit them and I create a huge mess. Number three, go vertical. And no, we're not talking about playing basketball. What I'm talking about is when you're designing or setting up your area to store all of your brewing supplies and brewing stuff. I've had a lot of people ask like where I got this, what, you know, size, shape, you know, and I found it on Amazon multiple times. I've put a few links out there for people, but go vertical. If you don't have a lot of space or you have some limitations to your space when storing your equipment, if you can get close to the ceiling, which you can see I'm literally inches from the ceiling, go vertical. You'll get more out of that one little, say you have a 10 by 10 square foot or four by four or two by two, go up. Suddenly that two by two bit of square foot times, say if you have a 10 foot ceiling, there you go. But basically you're gonna gain more space by going vertical for storing your brewing supplies. Get creative with your store. No, number four, get creative with your storage. A lot of brewing equipment can be stored inside of other brewing equipment. I have my brewing bucket. I have an old uh, bio chicken fryer pot, whatever you want to call it. And I put tons of things in those. I have my big giant things I showed you that I store the grain in. They're more for dog food, but they seal perfectly. Anytime I'm buying fresh grains and I got them in a bag and I haven't had time to transfer them to something else, I just shove them in whichever one's low and store it in there, seal it up. That way I know it's set. If 
but get creative with your storage. I mean, you'd be shocked how much stuff can go inside. I mean, this goes in there, so it saves me space. And any accessories, like when I had the grandfathers, they had lots of stuff. I would put them all inside. That way I don't have to worry about where to go, where is it when I go to brew. Number five, leave it in the kitchen. And I know you're going, what? If you have equipment like measuring cups, spoons, and I mean big spoons, little spoons, it doesn't matter, or any other items that you use in brewing all the time, but you have space in your kitchen. Now, if you don't, you know, I'm assuming you do. If you have space in your kitchen, leave it in the kitchen. If you have to orient it in the kitchen where you know where it is, great. I have a bunch of Pyrex. I did not buy those to use in cooking, even though I do. I bought them more so for doing stuff with brewing because they don't melt. And I had already damaged some of the plastic measuring cups and my wife wasn't real happy. So. Anything that you don't have to store in your brewing area if your brewing area is limited. Now, if your brewing area is bigger than your kitchen, stick it in your brewing area. But leave it in the kitchen, leave it where it may get some multi-purpose usage and it'll free up some space in your brewing area. Number six, like with like. You ever saw when I mentioned storing things in these little shoe containers? I got keg stuff, keg connectors, water treatment, testing, bubblers, ferment or fermentation, caps, sugar, flavoring, I basically store like things together. If you store like things together and you go looking for something, it's much easier to find it, especially if you know it's grouped with similar things. So anything to do with kegging is going to be in that container, or of course, it's a small, tiny adapter or tiny thing. I showed you this, I put them in here and I've got tons of little things in here, but I know if it's small, like an O-ring, it's gonna be in there. It's gonna be easy to find because, hey, I'm storing it with like things, other tiny things, I guess you could say. Magic. Number seven, oxygen absorbing bottle caps. First, these things aren't going to fix an oxidized beer. They're not going to do anything like that. So if you're afraid you added a bunch of air to it or you screwed up, this is not going to save you. I'm sorry, but it will help. It's absorbing tiny bits of O2 that may have been trapped between like the, the head of the beer and the actual top where you're putting the cap on. They are also highly recommended for your beer if you're going to bottle condition or age your bottles. So if you're aging that stuff, boom. And I saw somebody out there were saying, oh, I got these from more beer, but they were $2 less than the ones that weren't oxygen absorbing. It doesn't matter. These things are pretty much, this is all I buy. I buy them at my local homebrew shop. They're awesome. They just do a good job. The oxygen absorbing thing is a bonus. Maybe it's helped me a few times, I don't know. I know I have some beer that's gone three, four years old in my fridge that tastes just as great, if not better sometimes than when I first did it. I don't know if this is to, you know, blame in a good way, but they're cheap. They don't seem to be any more expensive. Sometimes they're less, but yeah, oxygen absorbing bottle caps. If you're not already using them, use them. Different colors, of course, for color coding, figuring out what you got bottled if you're bottling beer. Number eight, maybe I'll take a picture of it. I'm not gonna move it. It's full of bottles right now. I'll show it to you. I'll put a picture of one without bottles. I'll put mine over here with bottles. But number eight, bottling tree. These things are awesome. When you're cleaning a ton of bottles, it's just, it's awesome. They, and like I said, go vertical. You can store them vertically. They go right in there, they drip. I, that's where I store my bottles is in the bottle tree. When the bottle tree is kind of full, I hook up a lot of people with some good beer. But I didn't think these things were all that great. My, my wife got me one for Christmas years ago and I use that thing constantly. I always have bottles sitting in there. Every time I have a bottle, I pour it, I rinse it, clean it out, throw it on there. When I go to use it, of course, I'll clean it really good, make sure the tree's clean and then I'll let it drip dry and then boom, I bottle the bottles. But yeah, bottling tree seems kind of dumb, but I love that thing and I've been using it forever. Even with kegging, when I've got it, boom, the bottling tree, it just makes my life easy. Number nine, something I've been meaning to do for a while and haven't done, <laughs> spare CO2 line. Having a spare CO2 line is awesome for helping purge kegs, bottling, any kind of use where you need to purge the oxygen out of something, pressure fermentation. I mean, there's so many uses for it. I need to kind of re-engineer part of my keyser so I can have a spare. Otherwise, I'm always taking it off of the keg. I'm usually cranking the pressure up or down, using it for what I need, then putting it back, then readjusting the pressure it's probably more of a pain than it's worth and I need to just bite the bullet and add a spare CO2 line. Number 10, and this is the one I promised the parents out there with kids. Yeah, kids do things by accident. Kids do things and say it was an accident. Um, this is gonna be a lot cheaper. As I mentioned, we were selling our house. 
my wife asked about putting tap locks on because you know sometimes somebody's looking at a house and their kids are running around going crazy it's 32 dollars a tap to get those tap locks and those tap locks the good ones are 32 dollars they're expensive that's a lot of money i've got eight taps are you crazy i'm not paying 32 dollars simple super simple and i didn't lock my keyser but you get a padlock you put it on here and you just disconnect all the liquid lines i did that i took a cup and I, I got dribbles. I didn't get any real beer out of anything. So all my tap lines are just simply disconnected from the kegs. And if you did have kids that you were going away for the weekend and you got a 16 year old that, you know, never know what they're gonna be doing. Yeah. You put a lock on here, lock it down if you have to. You can padlock both ends. I don't know. I, I, I sadly doubt they're gonna take apart the whole lid just to get in there. But you know, that way you don't come back and you go, dad, I don't know what happened, man. All 35 gallons poured on the floor. I, I had to clean it up. It was a mess when you know all their friends are still crashed out on the floor. So just something to consider. Thanks again for joining Bitter Reality Brewing in the top 10 for week 34. Been a lot. Thank you again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the support. Thank you again.